Good evening and welcome to uh, my home again in Baruch HaMaboyim. This week on my thoughts, um, the lecture is going to deal with a, uh, a special blessing in prayers. So this week on my thoughts, I'd like to examine a prayer that we recite daily in our weekday prayers, in the Amida, the standing prayer. Reb Chaim Dital, in his uh, book Shar Ruach HaKodesh, in the name of his Rebbe, the Arizal, stated, that one must be careful to concentrate, concentrate during prayer, especially during the blessing of Hashiva Shovtenu, a prayer that we recite with a request that God should restore our judges to their former, former status and glory. Now the question becomes, why did the Arizo caution one to concentrate more on this blessing, more than any of the other blessings in the Amida? This blessing contains all the letters in the Hebrew alphabet except the letter Zion. The letter Zion has a gematria, a numerical value of seven. This number is connected to many concepts in Judaism. Uh, this is, seven is a number that deals with, again, the natural world, seven days of the week, such as the seven days of creation, which connected to the seven emotional traits that God Almighty employed when he created this world. The Levush stated that the number seven is referring to the holiday of Sukkot, the Talmud in, in the Tractate of Sukkot, which expounds on the verse in Micha, which states that during the time of Mashiach, that God will send up seven shepherds against our enemies. So the Talmud asks, who, who are these seven shepherds? The Talmud answers, they are David, who will be in the center, Adam, Sheish, and Musushelach will be on his right, and Avraham, Yaakov, and Moshe will be on his left. There may be an additional reason as to why the letter Zion is omitted in this prayer. You know, the nations of the world are required by God Almighty to observe the seven Noahide laws. These laws were given to Noah uh, after the flood when he left the ark. They were given only to the nations of the world, not to the children of Israel. The Jewish nation is commanded to observe 613 commandments. Now this blessing begins with the words, Hashiva Shoftenu, restore our judges as they were originally, Vyotsenu and our counselors as they were initially. The question becomes, which judges and which counselors is this blessing referring to? In addition, what's the difference between the words originally and initially? The judges can be compared to Shmuel HaNavi, Samuel the prophet. It is said in Tehillim in Psalm 99.6, that Shmuel was greater than Moshe and Aaron combined. The Mechilta points out that the difference between Moshe and Shmuel is that Moshe was compelled to leave his tent in order to hear and be in the presence of God Almighty, whereas Shmuel, it was God Almighty who would come to him. The reason given is that Moshe would sit and the people were compelled to bring the cases to him to adjudicate. However, Shmuel was the first circuit judge. He would exert himself to travel from place to place in order to bring judgment to the people. Moshe, who sat in one place, had to go to God. However, Shmuel, who went to the people, God therefore came to him. So the lesson that we learn here is, God Almighty is telling those who judge the people that they shouldn't wait for the people to come to them, rather that they should be like Shmuel and that they should go out to the people and by doing so, they would be more successful in their mission. Our sages at the end of the Pisgah de Rav Kahana on the book of Echa expounds on the verse in Yeshaya which states, And I will restore your judges as they were originally and your counselors as they were initially. When referring to your judges, they are David Melech and Shlomo. And your counselors are referring to both Moshe and Aaron. Rabbi Avram ben Agra explains that the difference between Tehila, which means originally, and Rishona, which means initially, is that Tehila is an absolute beginning without anything else ever preceding it, making it an absolute first. Whereas the term Rishona can be complied even when something similar has preceded it. Nonetheless, as regard to a specific category, it is still the first. The blessing begins with the word shoftim, judges. Well, judges are alluded to, as we mentioned, by David and Shlomo, since they were the first to combine both kingship and justice together. 
though they were clearly other leaders that preceded them. However, in the regard to the word Yo'atzenu, our counselors, which are alluded to by Moshe and Aaron, they were unique. Before them, there were never counselors who could be compared to them as teachers of the Torah to the children of Israel. Theirs was an absolute beginning without anything similar that preceded them. So as we begin the blessing, we beseech God Almighty to restore judges like Dovin and Shlomo, who were Rishona the first, in the hope that we can restore our Yoatzenu, our counselors, those who taught us Torah, such as was done by Moshe and Aaron which is the essence, the beginning of everything. When we state that we wish to connect to our leaders who lived in earlier times, this can also allude to our earliest leaders, such as the forefathers and King David. In fact, the first three blessings in the Amut Mida, the standing prayer, allude to our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The blessing Hashiva Shavtenu ends with the word Melech, which means king which of course alludes to Dabon Amalek. We have a belief that he, together with the forefathers, comprise the four wheels which make up the Markova of Hashem, the chariot of God. Return our judges as they were initially? Well, I believe that though we translate the word Shoftenu as our judges, it may also allude to our personal judgment. When we judge initially, pardon me, when a judge initially takes a seat on the bench, now, he may be motivated with righteous thoughts and a desire to pursue justice. However, over time, he may be swayed by personal desires such as greed and prejudices. We pray to God, our Father in heaven, to help us to reconnect to our original thoughts and desires, those that we had when we first became Bali Chuva, repentant individuals. Then we were driven. However, over time, somehow, our motivation seems to reach a certain plateau. And then we become complacent. We sort of run out of gas. We look around us and we see so many people that are far below our level of religiosity. We become content with where we are spiritually. And then we stop trying to grow. In this prayer, we pray that we can overcome all of our personal desires and weaknesses and regain our initial motivation and drive. We pray that we can continue to grow in our religiosity. And we say we remove sorrow and all the complaining from us. As the Alter Rebbe, the founder of Chabad Hasidah, said to his grandson, the third Rebbe, the son of Tzedek, think positively and the outcome will be positive. Life is not about reality. Life is all about perception. If you think that you are happy, well, then guess what? You're happy. I always give the example of a sailboat and a powerboat. The sailboat only moves when the wind blows. It is the wind that dictates its progress. However, with the powerboat, you put the key in the ignition and you go wherever you want, whenever you want. Yes, there are storms that come up. Sometimes you can outrun them and other times you just have to weather the storm. Life is still life. You know, we need to acknowledge that happiness is a conscious choice. Try not to play defense, play offense. Don't wait for happiness to come to you. You should always be moving towards your goal. Happiness is not going to come to you without any effort. It is God who supplies the success, but in order to receive it, we must first provide the effort. Positive attitude. You know, I had a friend who was not a handsome individual, but he thought he was good looking. Whenever a woman would look at him, in his mind, he was certain that she was attracted to his good looks, and he would just stand taller. We live with, within the confines of our minds. Two people can experience the exact same scenario, yet they may view the results completely differently depending on how they perceive the situation. Happiness is a conscious choice. We cannot allow ourselves to entertain negativity. It can easily become the dominating force in our lives. And you, God, should judge us by yourself, meaning outside the courtroom. You know, we ask God Almighty, our Father in Heaven, that He should judge us, but in His private quarters, in that place where there are no rules or jurisprudence. 
there our Father in heaven is free to judge us without being restricted by the letter of the law. He can pardon our misdeeds and show us kindness and mercy, though we may not deserve it, since, after all, we are his children. The verse continues and tells us that even if we are forced to stand trial, it will be God who will be the advocate for our defense, the chesed uverachamim, predicated on kindness and mercy. And only then will we be forced to stand before the heavenly court in judgment. However, we can be assured that our case will be dealt with, but tzedek uvamishpa, with righteousness and honest judgment. The blessing ends with the words, Melech Oheb Sedaka Umishpat. Blessed are you, our God, King who loves righteousness and judgment. The men of the Great Assembly, the Anshas Knesset Agdola, established that we should first say, the King who loves Sedaka, which introduces the attribute of compassion, and only then do we conclude with Mishpat, with the attribute of Din, judgment. This is the only blessing in the Amida that ends with the Hebrew word Melech king. The gematria, the numerical value of the word melech, is 90. It descends from the letter mem, which is 40, to lamed 30, and then chaf 20, which equals 90. The number 90 is connected with the Hebrew word emes, truth. You know, the word emes has a gematria, a numerical value of 441. According to Kabbalah, one may add the numbers across. So then that would be 4 plus 4 plus 1, which equals 9. Nine times any other number always come back to nine, truth. The number 10 symbolizes the 10 traits by which God Almighty created this world. So the word melech, king, is an allusion to God's descent into olam, into this physical world. This numerical value is also a reminder to the king that it is his responsibility, the responsibility of a Jewish king, to be humble and to lower himself in order to serve his people properly. We bow four times in the Amida prayer. The high priest bows at the beginning and end of each of the blessings. Whoever the king, the king of Israel bows at the first word, Baruch, blessed, and he stays bowed until the last word, Shalom, peace. What we learn from this is that greater the man, the greater the humility. The next word, Ohave, loves, is also unique to this prayer. This is an allusion to the fact that God Almighty, our Father in heaven, loves, charity, and justice. We may wonder, why are these two commandments mentioned together? In addition, what is so special about these two commandments that they evoke God's love? This blessing is the eighth blessing of the 13 daily requests. The gematria, the numerical value of the word ohed, without a vav, is eight. Eight is a number that represents that which is above this natural world, such as the ritual of circumcision. The Hebrew word for the number eight is Shemoneh, which has the same letters as the Hebrew word Nishama, soul, our connection to God, our creator in heaven. Man, by his very nature, is greedy and self-centered. The fact that a person is willing to go against their nature and give others their money, tzedakah, charity, is not easy for many people to do. After all, they feel that they have worked hard to earn their money. Why would they want to give it to someone else, especially to someone who has not contributed anything to help produce their success? Nor is righteous justice an easy commandment to observe. People want to win, many times at any cost. It makes little difference to them whether they are right or wrong. Somehow they find a way to rationalize out their victory. They especially do not want anyone else to benefit from their loss. You know, they tell a story about a butcher that went to a rabbi and asked a question about a cow. Was it kosher or was it not? The rabbi looked at the animal and told him that it was trafe. The butcher was forced to take a large loss, but he accepted the decision. He did not complain to the rabbi at all. It happened that sometimes later, the same butcher had a case involving a small amount of money and he felt was owed to him by a certain individual. After consideration, the rabbi ruled against the butcher. Well, the butcher went nuts. He complained bitterly. The rabbi said to the butcher, I don't understand. When I told you that your cow was trave, you accepted my decision without any complaint whatsoever. And yet, here, though you have lost much less, you are complaining bitterly. 
Well, the butcher, butcher told the rabbi that it was all quite logical. He said, though he had lost a great deal of money before with the cow, no one else gained. Here, his loss was someone else's gain. Well, that troubled him deeply. So why does the word tzedek righteousness precede the word mishpat, justice? The word tzedek has within it the word tzedakah, charity. The word charity is derived from the Latin word meaning love. The Hebrew word tzedakah comes from the Hebrew word tzedek, which means righteous. We do not give charity because of love. We give charity because it is the proper thing to do. In addition, these two commandments represent the two extremes in Jewish law. Charity, according to the Alter Rebbe in his Magnus Opus, the Tanya stated that tzedakah is the one mitzvah that by itself will usher in the coming of Mashiach. Though it is one of the most pristine of mitzvahs, we do not recite a blessing before we perform the act. We just donate. We perform the mitzvah with an alacrity. Many times a poor person needs the money quickly so that they can survive. Even the slightest delay can cause them great harm, even death. The mitzvah of righteous judgment, on the other hand, is the slowest of all mitzvot. A judge is advised to ponder on the case before rendering a decision or verdict. In fact, even before he begins to listen to the pros and cons of the case, he should first try to reach some sort of compromise between the litigants. In fact, in the portion of the Torah that first introduces the laws of the Torah, it's called Mishpatim, the laws. The letters in the word Mishpatim are an acronym for the words Hadayim Mitzavah, Sheyiyah, Shporaterim Vyasa Mishpat. That a judge is commanded he should first introduce compromise before he enters into judgment. So we see that only after all else fails does the judge enter into judgment. The judge is cautioned. Even if he has adjudicated many similar cases recently, he is still required to listen to every detail in the present case carefully, since there may be some slight variation in this case that changes his decision completely. Court cases are many times decided on one word. So in the closing words of this blessing, we are presented with the missive that should be performed with the greatest alacrity, the missive of giving charity. This is followed by the slowest of all mitzvot, passing judgment on disagreements between people. The lesson for us is, as the Rambam suggested, to take the middle road. One should not go to either extreme. Rather, they should strive for a compromise, first and foremost, whenever possible. When two litigants agree to compromise, well, then both parties win. A judge in Jewish law is seen as an extension of God Almighty himself. This is why a judge is called by God's name Elohim, the name that was used when God created the world. We read in the Megillus Rus that the famine rage that raged in Israel at the time of the story was attributed to unscrupulous judges. Our sages tell us that when judges do not follow the letter of the law, then God Almighty brings famine to the land. This blessing is the 11th blessing in the Amida, the standing prayer. 11 is a number which alludes to both the five books of the written Torah and the six oral orders of the oral Torah. When judges follow that which is written in both, then the world prospers. When they don't follow, then it brings disaster to the world. I find it interesting that in Kabbalah there is a way of exchanging the first 11 letters of the Hebrew alphabet with the last 11 letters referred to as the Atbash. The Hebrew word for charity, tzedakah, in the Atbash, amazingly, still remains tzedakah. It does not change. Our mission should be to return to happier times, when peace and justice prevailed, a time when people talked and listened to one another. Let us hope and pray that we can achieve this goal without the use of the Zion, the weapons of war. Instead, let us pray that we benefit from all the positive benefits that the word Zion affords without all the negatives. Altogether, there are 120 letters in this prayer. We bless a person that they should live ad mea the esrim until the age of 120. Let us pray that the world allows us to receive this blessing. So the fact that there is no Zion in this blessing may also be an illusion that when Mashiach comes, we will have no need of any clay Zion, any weapons of war, since it will be God Almighty himself who will be our salvation. 
Let us all cultivate a positive attitude towards life and all those around us. Remember, happiness is a gift that you give yourself. Let us all connect to God Almighty, our benevolent Father in Heaven, so that we can enjoy all the blessings that this world offers and stay happy. Let us pray that God Almighty brings a swift and decisive end to the war in Gaza with the total defeat of Hamas and all the evil in the world. May he free the hostages and return them home safely. May he cure the sick and injured, comfort the mourners, and bring home all the brave IDF soldiers led by Mashiach Zucano quickly and in our time, and let it be now. Again, thank you very much for attending. May God bless you and yours with all that's good, happiness, health, and safety. And again, if you will, please, if you haven't already, subscribe, push the like button, and please make a point to share with your friends. There's a lot to know here. Again, after this, there will be a musical rendition. Uh, hope you stand by and hope you enjoy it. God bless and be well. Shabbat Shalom.